Namo Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Ve Tanta Swami Niti Namine. Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gauravani Pachadine, Nivishesha Shunyavadi, Paschachadesha Tadine, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Prabhunachananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Sri Vasadi Bhakta Vidna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare We have two topics for tonight. One has been assigned by our scheduling overseers. <laughs> they requested I speak a little bit about Srinivas Acharya. Mainly, we'll be talking about something that I wanted to speak about because it just came up in my consciousness. Past time of Krishna killing Agasura. But particularly, I want to focus on what happened afterward. Before the Brahma Vimohana Leela, the bewilderment of Lord Brahma. And just immediately after Krishna dispatching Agasura. A wondrous thing happened besides the way that Krishna finished off Agasra. So I like to often consider various pastimes of Krishna by focusing on sections that we might actually not meditate upon so much. But in trying to focus on what happened upon the slaying of Agasur? I got caught up in the whole Leela <laughs> from the beginning. <laughs> I couldn't control my senses. <laughs> so mm, I made a compromise with myself. I'll start at the point. 10th Canto, chapter 12, text 24, when the boys have already come upon 
Agassar, who has, by his mystic power, Kama Rupa, has expanded himself in the form of an eight mile long serpent. Prior to this, I can't resist. Prior to this, <laughs> the cowherd boys were having a good time playing in the forest. Harvey Kanrapur in his Ananda Vrindavan shampoo describes how they would challenge one another. Let's all race and we'll see who comes out first, Krishna or us. So they did that and Krishna won. This is right at the point when they see Agasura. Agasura is sent by Kamsa. So he has a deadly mission. He's angry. He wants vengeance. Why? Then after you know why. Agasura wants vengeance because Krishna has killed his younger brother and sister. What a ferocious, deadly family. Hutana and Bakasura. <laughs> so like anyone in the bodily concept of life, Agasura takes his relatives to be his, his everything, his bodily relationships. So he has a double motivation sent by Kamsa and vengeance. He wants vengeance for his departed brother and sister. There's one more thing, though. As he embarks upon his mission and he's looking at the cowherd boys and Krishna, what is it he can't tolerate? Well, I, do you know? <laughs> he can't tolerate that they're, the cowherd boys and Krishna are having so much fun. He hates that. <laughs> so he's got a triple motivation. Sent by Kamsa. Vengeance for his killed brother and sister. And he just can't stand that Krishna and the cowherd boys are enjoying the way they are. So as you know, he positions himself in the forest of Vrindavan. So the boys see this huge form, can't miss it. And they begin to debate amongst themselves. What is this? Some are quite sure. This is an animal. Others are thinking, nah, no snake can be this big. Get serious, boys. This has to be like a clay statue made by Krishna for our enjoyment. <laughs> so they're going back and forth about that. Some other they conclude, no, actually, it's not a statue or a huge amusement exhibit constructed by Krishna. It's actually a live creature that it seems it wants to swallow us. But why should we worry? Krishna will kill any potential demoniac murderer, just like he did with Bokasura. So, no worries. <laughs> They're absorbed in the genuine no worries mate consciousness. <laughs> they had full faith in Krishna. We've seen what he's done. 
they didn't think Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Remember, this is Vrindavan Leela. They just think, whoever he is, whatever he is, he's our friend. And sometimes, as I often point out, when they would see Krishna do something extraordinary, they would speculate. Hmm, hmm, who is he really? Maybe he's a devata, a demigod. But boys, you know what that means. If he's a devata, that means we are too, because we're all equal. We're all his friends. <laughs> it's so clear, the logic. <laughs> yes, this is Brindavan logic. <laughs> <laughs> never accept that Krishna is a supreme personality got it and Krishna doesn't want the, his associates to think about that <laughs> mm. so I figured the gopas the young gopas figured that let's enjoy the sport of entering the demon's mouth and if there's a problem, Krishna will save us. It's all part of the recreation. Going into danger and being saved by Krishna. So they marched into Agasura's mouth, clapping hands, laughing loudly. Hmm. What is Krishna going to do? Some of the cowherd boys are actually thinking, friends, we must find out what is in the mouth. <laughs> Just like young boys, they want to explore. <laughs> so some acharyas say they walked in. Others say they ran in because <laughs> they wanted to show how fearless they are. <laughs> and even their calves with their tails up in the air, ran after the cowherd boys into Agasura's mouth. Keep in mind, and it's very important, that this is going on during the last part of the Komar age of the cowherd boys and Krishna. That means before they were six years old. You know, Krishna has three phases of his apparent development in Vrindavan. Komar, Poganda, and Kaishur. So between the age of one and five, that's the Komar phase. And this is the phase that Krishna and the cowherd boys are in. It's very important to remember that because we're, as we get to the end of this particular Leela, you'll wonder along with Pritchett Maharaj, why no one talked about this incident. The cowherd boys never talked about it for one year. When they were in the Poganda stage, over five years old. During Krishna's Omar phase, his leelas are most relishable for Mother Yashoda. And then when Krishna is in the Poganda phase between five and 10, his leelas are most relishable by the cowherd boys, the young gopas. Then for the Kaishur phase between 10 and 16, as Prabhupada writes in Nectar Devotion, this phase is what devotees of Krishna universally appreciate the most. This is the phase of Gopijana Balaba, Gopinath. What happens after that? 
the Kaishur phase ends at the age of 16. But you never see Krishna older than 16. Even when he's, his manifest pastimes have been in this world for 125 years, and he has grandsons still. <laughs> he always looks like a 16 year old. Wouldn't you ladies like to have a husband like that? <laughs> <laughs> the eternal teenager, youthful freshness, unlimited beauty. So here we are at the last phase, the last year of Krishna's Omar face. And we're watching the cowherd boys run or march into Agasara's mouth, the calves running after them. And some of them were looking right at Krishna's face. as they ran in. And being young boys, they were, they're showing off. They're showing off their courage, their pride, <laughs> looking right at Krishna's face and laughing. Here we go. <laughs> now, according to Kavi Karnapur, when Krishna sees them enter into the mouth of Agasura, he starts crying. He's into the Leela. Oh, no. Why is he crying? Not because he senses material danger. No, he's crying because he feels separation from his friends. It's all part of the exchange of rasa. There's no question of material danger affecting Krishna. And according to Kavi Karnapur, Krishna called out to the boys, boys, stop, stop, don't go in there. But they couldn't hear him. Why? As they entered the mouth of Agasura, they were overcome by the poisonous fumes emanating from Agasura's belly. So they were already falling unconscious and therefore they couldn't hear Krishna's warning. So there's Krishna outside Agasura and the cowherd boys and calves are inside. Momentarily, Krishna appears puzzled. That's part of his Leela also. Relishing a problem. What am I going to do? How am I going to save the day? <laughs> Agasura, meanwhile, has not swallowed. You see the cowherd boys and calves are inside his mouth, but Agasra hasn't swallowed yet. Why? What's his strategy? I can't swallow until Krishna enters my mouth. I'm just waiting for Krishna who's killed my brother and sister. Everyone has entered my mouth except Krishna. <laughs> Krishna's killed my brother and sister. That's why Agasura didn't swallow. So Leela Shakti, Krishna's pastime energy, 
has arranged this whole scene. As happens every time a demon enters grudge. Because variety is the spice of enjoyment. And so the cowherd boys and Krishna become so absorbed in playing in one way. So how can the scene be changed? That's why the Leela Shakti, the pastime energy, the energy for managing pastimes, sends demons, especially often in the enjoyment of Krishna, the cowherd boys in the forest. They don't stop for lunch. <laughs> and so the Leela Shakti, the pastime energy, sends in a demon and that causes Krishna cowherd boys to stop playing in one way, dispatch the demon and then take lunch. <laughs> now, how could any tiny jiva, any tiny living entity claim to be the Supreme? Only Krishna has a Leela Shakti, a pastime energy that manages his whole affairs for maximum pleasure without Krishna even having to worry about how to orchestrate his pastimes. So this is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and understanding far beyond the Supreme as the creator, the maintainer, the destroyer. So now we have cowherd boys and calves inside the mouth. And Agasra hasn't closed his mouth, hasn't swallowed them. We already explained why. The whole reason for this pastime actually is prema the love of the cowherd boys for Krishna. You have to focus on the cowherd boys and their reality. And also we're going to find out how important the reality of Agasura is. <clears throat> we talked about how Krishna is momentarily struck with wonder. I've got a problem here to solve. First, Krishna is feeling an equivalent of sorrow, as we pointed out. He's feeling separation from his friends. And then he starts feeling astonishment. These are all various flavors of rasa described in nectar devotion. Astonishment because how am I gonna solve this? I have to do two things at once. I have to kill the demon and save my friends and calves inside him. How do you, <laughs> how does one arrange that? And why are the cowherd boys inside? Is it their karma? No, it cannot be their karma. They're not under the influence of karma. <laughs> so that's why Krishna's astonished. They've escaped from my protection, apparently. And they're about to die. So the question is, what can be done? Krishna waited for a moment and actually the higher powers, material powers, the devatas, the demigods are all watching. And somehow or other, Kamsa and his horde, they're aware of this very key moment. 
Krishna entering the mouth of Akasura. The demigods have been plagued by Agasura. They are already in fear of him. So when Krishna enters the mouth of Agasura, the demigods are lamenting, oh no, oh no. And Kamsa's hordes of demoniac fiends they are celebrating. Okay, okay. <laughs> Krishna's in his mouth. He's finished. So Krishna wants to reverse this situation. He wants the demons to lament and the demigods to rejoice. But there has to be a little suspense first. And so... When he first enters the mouth, the demigods are all fearful. Now, someone may ask, how many calves and cowherd boys entered the mouth of Agasura? But Vrindavan cannot be restricted by time or space. I was hearing my godbrother Burijan Prabhu explain how during a class in Los Angeles, Prabhupada started speaking about giant cosmic eagles that can fly from one planet to another and their eggs hatch midway between planets. <laughs> so when it was time for questions, one devotee bravely or foolishly, as you like, raised his hand and said, how are we to believe this? How are we to believe that there are such huge eagles that can fly from one planet to another and have their eggs hatched mid-flight in space? The way Buri Prabhu explains it, the question being asked was one that would be on everyone's mind in the audience, but this particular devotee stuck his neck out and asked the question and <laughs> nuclear annihilation followed. Prabhupada said to him in such a way that none of us can imitate, what do you know? You are still in your mother's womb. The young man never recovered from that. Even years later, he encountered devotees and he still hadn't gotten over it. Bhakti is nothing to take lightly. It has the most serious consequences and ramifications. So sometimes devotees ask questions like, how could there be unlimited cows in Vrindavan? How can there be thousands upon thousands upon thousands of gopis in Raslila? Vrindavan has no limitation of time or space. So the demigods had been hiding behind the clouds, watching Krishna enter the mouth. And they were fearful. And Kamsa and his friends were all jubilant. And as we said, it's time to reverse the situation. So 
But before Krishna began enlarging himself within the mouth of, more technically within the throat of Agasura, what was Agasura doing? He wasn't just uh, passive. No, he fought back. How did he fight back? When he felt Krishna starting to expand himself, Agastra also started to expand himself. Like, you want to get big? I can get big too. I can get even bigger. <laughs> but he, he maxed out. <laughs> he couldn't keep up with Krishna's expansion within his throat. His idea, Agasura's idea was to swallow Krishna, get Krishna into his stomach and digest him, along with the cowherd boys and calves. But he didn't plan on Krishna's ability to expand himself. Krishna does things in his Vrindavan Leela in different ways. When dealing with Shakatasura, the cart demon, and Trinavarta, the whirlwind demon. Krishna showed his powers by remaining in a very small form. But in the throat of Agasura, he demonstrated, I have the ability to expand myself any way I want. Now, in some pastimes, like Damodar Leela, the Lord does inconceivable things while maintaining his small form because he wants the devotees to fully taste the sweetness of his childhood Leela without seeing anything, without their seeing anything that is so inconceivable in terms of his form. He doesn't want anything disturbing their conception that he's their child. But what happens during this killing of Agasura when Krishna expands himself? His two parents, Yashoda Mai and Nandamaraj, are not there. So Krishna doesn't have to be concerned about interfering with their parental love, their Vatsalya praying. He can just do what he likes free of that concern. Whereas I pointed out in dealing with other demons, because of the presence of his parents, he didn't expand his form. He let the he let his parents and the elder people of Vrindavan of Braj focus on his ch small child form. Not that he didn't have the ability to expand, but Krishna knows how to bring out the best love of his various types of devotees. Now, Jiva Goswami points out a detail regarding Agasura's plan to terminate Krishna. <laughs> Host unmuted me for a moment. Agasura's specific military tactic was to, by shutting his mouth, crush Krishna and the cowherd boys, and then he would roll about on the ground. And that way he'd be sure to finish off Krishna. I guess it's the Agasura snake demon's version of what crocodiles do in Australia, the death roll. <laughs> so he had that in mind. Not only will I, ha I start crushing Krishna within me so I can digest him, but I'll start roll about on the ground and there's no way anyone's going to survive.
But as you know, Krishna increased and increased and increased. And Agasura is going insane. His eyes are popping out. What can he do? This little boy inside him, and he just keeps expanding. And so Agasura is thrashing about, wondering. He's lost. He's disorientated. Where am I? Where will I go? What's happening to me? These are the last seconds before he's finished. His prana, his life force couldn't get out. Finally, his, his prana bursts out through the top of Agasura's head. So now Krishna, by his glance, revives the cowherd boys and calves. They weren't dead. They were in a death-like state, mainly because of feeling separation from Krishna. And then secondarily, because of the heat from Agasura's stomach. Krishna's glance over them was full of affection. These are all Krishna's human-like pastimes. Now we get to the part which I had originally planned to focus on only, but I got carried away. <laughs> I couldn't resist the beginning. <laughs> Krishna wants to show something that normally you don't see. The departed spirit soul of Agasura. which waited in the sky outside of the now dead body, waited for Krishna to come out. And as you know, the departed spirit soul of Agasra, like a brilliant light in the sky, merged into the body of Krishna. Now, more precisely, he merged into Brahman. But from a general point of view, because Brahman is the effulgence of Krishna, it said he merged into Krishna. What's so special about this whole situation? before we talk about how Agasra actually went beyond merging into the Brahman effulgence and became a resident of Vaikuntha with the same form. Sarupya Mukti, the same form as Narayan. Before we talk about that, let's talk about Krishna's modus operandi in having the departed soul visibly wait in the sky so that everyone could see. This is a lesson, especially for the devatas. He wanted to show the demigods, just see the individuality of the spirit soul is a fact. Normally you wouldn't be able to see this because you can't see the spirit soul with ordinary vision. But Krishna made it visible. And he also made the whole sight of the spirit soul merging visible. So Krishna is creating such, such a demonstration just to show the Tvevaham Jatunasam Natam Neme Janadapa. Never was there a time when I was not an individual, you were not an individual, 
Never will there be such a time. And Krishna also wants to show the demigods that anyone killed by him attains liberation. At least Sayuja and sometimes even Sarupya having the same form. But nothing compares to what his bhaktas get. They don't get mukti, they get vimukti. Beyond Vaikuntha, if they so desire. So Srimad Bhagavatam confirms in several places that Agasura attained Sarupa Mukti. Just as Jai and Vijay did upon their return after three births as demons. So in this way, Krishna is demonstrating that just as in the case you'll find out of Shishupal and Dantavakra, when they died, a light from their body entered into the Lord. But for the case of Agasura, this is so visible by Krishna's arrangement. And the devatas are amazed. Wait a minute, this creature is so sinful. Yet we've observed, we're able to observe the process of liberation, which is beyond material perception. We shouldn't ordinarily be able to see the spirit soul in its glory, nor should we be seeing the whole process of the spirit soul entering into Brahman but by Krishna's arrangement, they could see this. He also wanted to show the demigods, there's no doubt about Agasra's liberation. So they saw the devatas could see. Agasura merge, apparently merge into the body of Krishna, but actually he's in Brahman and he'll pass through Brahman to Vaikuntha. Now such a huge celebration happens, especially in the upper planets. Demigods are showering flowers, Celestial dancing girls, those apsaras, <laughs> drummers beating their drums, brahmanas offering Vedic hymns. The greatest demonstration of artistry and praise. It's happening to the extent that Lord Brahma is wondering. What's going on? So this is the start of Brahma's bewilderment. It's like a celebration he has never heard before. And he's Brahma. He's wondering, so much glorification of Krishna. I'm astonished. So Brahma came this is when Brahma appears on the scene to check out the situation. And as you know, Lord Brahma will next see the lunchtime pastimes of Krishna Cowherd boys and be completely bewildered. Wait a minute, can this really be my worshipable Lord? Look at this lunch scene. This little blue boy is playing with his friends. Is this really my worshipable Lord? Let me be scientific. I'll be empirical. Let me make a test. 
So right now, during the celebration by the Devatas upon the death of Agasra, this is what first catches Brahma's attention. He had never heard such an outpouring of jai, jai, and musical instruments playing and celestial heavenly girls dancing and drummers beating their drums and brahmanas offering their mantras. And <laughs> so he came. And that's the beginning of his bewilderment. Meanwhile, what's happening with the body of Agasra? It dries up into a big skin and becomes a tourist attraction for the bridge bosses. <laughs> and it even smells good because Krishna has been inside. So it remained there in Vrindavan for a long time. And the residents of Vrindavan, especially the cowherd boys, would consider it to be one of the amusement sites. So now we get to the issue of why didn't the cowherd boys talk about what happened in the forest with Agasra until one year later, as if it had happened that very day. This will be a question we'll talk about if you happen to attend our question and answer session on Saturday morning at 8 a.m. <laughs> it's a question that Pritchett Maharaj wonders about, and Shukadeva Goswami is so glad that Pritchett Maharaj is wondering about it. And Shukadeva expresses his gratitude and appreciation. Thank you for being inquisitive about why this was not discussed until one year later. But we'll deal with that on Saturday morning at the start of our question and answer session. Now, I promised Krishna Chandra Prabhu I would mention, according to his request, about Srinivas Acharya. We always think of Srinivas Acharya as part of the inseparable trio of Shaimananda and Narutam Das Thakur. Srinivas Acharya, first of all, think of him as the form of frame, the form of love, pure love. That's how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu considered him. But Srinivas Acharya was, he missed out on the physical presence of Mahaprabhu. His father was free of any desire for attainment in this world. His father was named Chaitanya Das because he was so intoxicated with divine love for Mahaprabhu. But one day, out of the blue, so to speak, Chaitanya Das tells his wife, I want to have a son. I feel such a strong wish all of a sudden. So he had such a high-quality wife. She immediately told him, well, we have to go to Puri. We, ha we have to go to Puri and get the blessings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so they went to Puri and met Mahaprabhu and paid their obeisances. And even before Chaitanya Das could reveal what was on his mind, 
Lord Titania told him, Jagannath will certainly fulfill all your desires. So the devotees hearing that were wondering, what's going on? And Lord Chaitanya explained, Chaitanya Das desires to have a son. He and his wife will give birth to a jewel of a son who will be named Srinivas. He'll be the manifest form of my love. And he'll increase everyone's bhakti enthusiasm. There's Rupa Goswami and the other Goswamis of Vrindavan. And through them will come so many scriptures. But Srinivas will focus on distributing the scriptures. Through Srinivas, I will distribute the books. <laughs> so that is Srinivas Acharya. And when he was born as a child, so many associates in Bengal of Shitasani Mahaprabhu gave the child their blessings. And he would always hear from his father the divine glories of Mahaprabhu and Radha and Krishna. And so both father and little boy would just go into ecstatic rapture <laughs> talking about Mahaprabhu and Radha and Krishna. Not, does that happen in your home? <laughs> Both the father and the little boy. But this is a world of birth and death, and even great souls appear to come and go in a way of birth and death. And so while Srinivas was still young, his father disappeared from this world. And devotees consoled the child and his mother. So as he became older, Srinivas heard from a great devotee of Mahaprabhu, Narahari Sakar, that very soon Mahaprabhu would be ending his earthly pastimes. So Srinivas naturally wanted to see Mahabrabhu before his departure. He hadn't seen him. In... So he set out for Puri. And before he arrived in Puri, however, the news arrived that Mahabrabhu had disappeared. He had ended his leela. So Srinivasachari was so overwhelmed, he thought to commit suicide. But Mahaprabhu appeared to him in a dream and told him, keep going to Puri, complete your journey. And there, Srinivasacharya met so many great associates of Lord Chaitanya. He stayed for some time, especially in the association of Gadadhar Pandit. Jai Sri Krishna Jaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadha, Sri Vasudhi Gaur Bhaktivinoda. And then he returned to go to Dish. Upon his return, he finds out Advaita Charya Nityananda Prabhu had also disappeared. So once again, he decided, let me end my life. This is too much. But Advaita Acharya and Nityananda appeared to him in a dream and consoled him. So I hope you're getting this picture in your mind about Srinivas Acharya. He's, apparently he's just missing out by a hair's breadth, missing out on Mahaprabhu's appearance in this world and then Nityananda and Advaita Acharya. It seems to be the story of his life, just missing out. But we're not done yet. He went to Vrindavan. And what did he find out upon arriving in Vrindavan? Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami 
and Raghunath Bhatt Goswami had just disappeared. It's like you would think he can't win. Raghunath Das Goswami, Gopal Bhatt Goswami, and Jiva Goswami were still there. And so Srinivasacharya took shelter of them. He's initiated by Gopal Bhatta Goswami and Jiva Goswami instructed him in the Vaishnava scriptures. So Jiva Goswami is the one who ordered Srinivasacharya, Narottam, and Shamananda to take the Shastras on an ox cart back to Bengal so that people could be benefited by all these extraordinary literatures written by the Goswamis of Vrindavan. But as you may know, on their way, they were robbed. There was a king who was the leader of Dacoits, gangsters. And he heard information that a cargo of precious value was passing through his territory. So the king turned to an astrologer. Back then, astrologers were that good. <laughs> Back then. And asked, can you tell me if there's truly a valuable cargo in possession of these sadhus. And the astrologer confirmed, yes, they're carrying something extremely precious. The king knew what that meant. Money, money, jewels. <laughs> <laughs> so he sent a group of robbers to steal the cargo, mercifully instructing the robbers, don't kill anyone. So being good Hindus, what did the robbers do before embarking on their nighttime mission? Being good Hindus, what did they do? <laughs> they worshipped Durga. <laughs> and then they sent out a spy to scope out the situation. And the spy came back telling them, They've had their nighttime meal. They've all gone to sleep soundly. So the robbers thought, ah, the mercy of Chandi, the mercy of Durga, <laughs> making everything possible. <laughs> Giving us a golden opportunity. They're all asleep. So they grabbed the ox cart and turned them over to the king, turned it over to the king. Everyone's thinking that they're gold and jewels inside. How disappointed was the king when he opened the ox cart to just find some books. So he immediately went to the astrologer like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> You're an astrologer. <laughs> How can you be so bewildered? And the astrologer try to defend himself. I don't understand what happened. I made the calculations again and again and again. And each time the same conclusion appeared that the chest that the ox cart was carrying is full of the most priceless jewels. I don't know how I could be wrong. So no one could figure it out because they're just books. <laughs> so the astrologer was totally baffled. <laughs> so you can imagine the devastation when Shamananda Narutam and Srinivas woke up in the morning and found all the books gone. They considered ending their life. They had failed in their mission sent by Jiva Goswami. Some villagers told them, you know, it's probably the king. He's a gangster leader. And so Srinivas 
devised a plan because the word was out that the king somehow or other liked to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. So Srinivas arranged that he would get in, he would accompany a Bhagavatam reciter for the king. And then the king would ask him also to speak on Bhagavatam. <laughs> and that happened for some days. And then the king became so attracted to Srinivas. And once while they were alone, Srinivas begins to tell the story of how they had these books in an ox cart and they were stolen. And these books are so precious. And the king confessed. Oh, I guess uh, <laughs> I do know something about that. Uh, funny that you brought it up. <laughs> mm. So Srinivas got the books back. And the king became Srinivas's initiated disciple. So what turned out to be a disaster, what was a disaster turned out to be something else. An increase in service. So in this way, Rupa Goswami, Snatan Goswami, the other Goswamis in Vrindavan are renowned for being the channel that so much Vaishnav literature came through. And as Lord Chaitanya himself explained, Srinivas is known as the channel for distributing all that literature. So this is a key moment, a key event in Vaishnava history. There's the writing of the books and there's the distrib distribution of the books. All right. Maybe we take one or two questions if there are any. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for taking us into the Vrindavan Lila and then again taking us into the Gora Lila. So thank you so much for that. Uh, before we take any questions, can I request His Grace uh, Bilba Mangal Prabhu to please uh, do a vote of thanks and then we can take question and answers. Bilba Mangal Prabhu. Hare Krishna, am I audible? Yes. Oh, thank you. Uh, dear Deomita Maharaj, um, please accept my humble obeisances on behalf of all the devotees and party participants uh, tonight. I would like to express my very sincere, our very sincere gratitude and appreciation for tonight's beautiful discourse. Uh, you took us, as Prabhu said, to uh, Gaur Lila and Vrindavan Lila, pastimes of uh, Krishna with Agasur, your deeper realizations, and also about Sri Nivas Acharya. Um, Maharaj, thank you also for giving your uh, kind association and your precious time during these uh, lockdowns. We really needed this. Uh, we are sitting in the comfort of our homes and releasing your uh, beautiful katha. Once again, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Uh, Maharaj, humble request, you did say that about uh, <coughs> today's question and answers. So is there any like a link that where the devotees can join in or we can use the same link? <laughs> um, you have to work that out with Gore Arti Devi Dasi. Okay, I will manage. Thank you. So is there any questions? Uh, rest of the devotees are most welcome to ask. Just unmute yourself and you are most welcome to ask. Seems it's quite... Maharaj, I've got one question. Uh, you did mention about that uh, bhakti shouldn't be taken lightly. So if you can please elaborate more in our day-to-day -day affair when we are doing bhakti or devotional service, what does that actually mean not to take it lightly? It's the rarest opportunity. Agasura was extremely fortunate because even though so demoniac, 
Krishna entered within him. Now, it's also said, Srila Prabhupada writes in the purport that Agasura actually did think of Krishna with devotion for a moment. Some or other he was managed to do that amidst his anger, his vengeance, his deadly mission. So we're moved to mot we're motivated to think. Well, if Agasura got all that benefit, what about those who are constantly trying to be devotees? This is what Lord Brahma exclaims in his prayers in the 14th chapter of the 10th Kana. Krishna, you've given yourself to Putana, the older sister of Agasra. You've given yourself to her. What's left then for your sold out devotees? What are you going to give them? <laughs> of course, there's no calculation of reward for those who have pure love for Krishna. But Brahma is just exclaiming like that. You've already given yourself to Putana. What do you have left to give to these bridge bossies who sacrificed their whole life for you? And, and you're their only, you're their life. What are you going to give them? So that's why there's the term vimukti. A sp special liberation as compared to mukti. What the devotees get in their loving exchanges with Krishna are beyond even Vaikuntha, if indeed the devotee has beyond Vaikuntha as his or her aspiration. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, is there any other questions? You're most welcome to ask. Well, we can call it a night. Thank you all for giving me the opportunity to speak about Krishna Leela and Srinivas Acharya. You can never talk about these pastimes enough. While speaking about Agasura and Krishna, I, I was just thinking, I've just barely scraped the surface. I, I need to go deeper. <laughs> I need to do this again. I just can't get to the bottom of this. And of course, I'll never get to the bottom of it. <laughs> Neither will you. So I wanted to focus just on Agasura departing from his body and merging into Brahman. And how that was such an extraordinary sight because you're not supposed to see that. Even the David does, you're not supposed to see that. I wanted to focus on that, but then I couldn't resist going to the beginning of the pastime. <laughs> Remember Krishna and the cowherd boys racing in the forest to see who would be number one, who would be the fastest, and Krishna winning, and Agasura, some other, watching all this and thinking, I can't tolerate all this bliss that they're feeling. <laughs> anyway, if I start talking about it, I'll <laughs> keep you up all night. So, <laughs> all right. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. His Holiness, the Vimutu Maharaj, Ki, Jai, Shri Prabhupada, Ki, Jai. So tomorrow we'll have His Grace uh, Praneshwar Prabhu, uh, all the way from India.